Hello YouTube. Uh, today we'll be looking at this problem that deals with torque. And so the setup here is that we have this hammer. Uh, we're applying some force F2, which is parallel to the ground on the end of this hammer handle. And we also have this nail, which is kind of diagonally uh, driven into some wood here. And you can see that the distance between the point of rotation, uh, our fulcrum here, and where the nail enters the wood is about this 0.08 meters and the goal here is to have an F1 that's sufficient to pull the nail out of the wood and let me check to see what exactly that force is yeah it's 500 newtons so essentially we want F1 oh that's not what I meant to do uh, here we go we want F1 to equal 500 newtons and the question is in order to make that true uh, what must F2 be and so essentially we're gonna set some torques equal to each other. We want the torque that's the result of this force two to equal the torque that's the result of this F1. And so remember that the definition of torque is we have uh, F cross R. And said differently, since in this case, uh, we're just interested in like the scalar magnitude of the torque, we can say, okay, that is uh, the magnitude of torque equals force times radius times sine theta. And that is where uh, theta is the difference between the, the two, between, between the force and the radius. So you can imagine that in the case where theta equals 90, that the magnitude of the torque is just equal to the force times the radius. So go ahead and take a moment and try that problem. And uh, go ahead and pause the video here and give it a go. And then once you've given it a shot, go ahead and hit play again and we can work through it. Uh, or, or just watch the solution. Uh, I, either way, it's the same to me. So we also see that we have this angle of 60 degrees right here. Um, so let's first figure out what, figure out the torque uh, that's related to this force one uh, on this system. So the two things we're interested in are in this radius right here. And once you figure out this radius, the force will be perpendicular to that radius. And so we can just say, okay, the magnitude of torque will just be F1 times what this radius is. So uh, this right here is gonna be a right angle. And we know what the hypotenuse is, it's 0 0.08. We know that this is 60. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just call this uh, R1. So we can say that R1 equals uh, the 0 0.080 meters and then times sine of 60 because it's an opposite side there. So then uh, the torque because of force one is gonna equal, uh, I suppose we can call it torque one, torque one. That'll just equal uh, force one times radius one, which is 0 0.080 meters times sine of 60. And then we wanna set that equal to uh, this torque two, which is a result of force two. And we could go about figuring out like what the component of this F2 is that's perpendicular to this hammer, and then also figuring out the length of the hammer. But uh, I think an easier way to think about it is uh, we have this force and this perpendicular force to this hammer is gonna be the same as just F2 times whatever the component of the hammer that's perpendicular to force two is. And we know that's this point three zero zero meters. So we know that torque two uh, is gonna equal just this effective radius of point uh, three zero zero meters. And that's because that's the component of the radius that's perpendicular to our force. And then that times, ooh, that times F2. So we can set those two things equal to each other, and by doing that, we can solve for F2, which is what we're looking for, knowing that F1 equals 500. So we can say F2 equals uh, 500 newtons over 0 0.080 meters times sine of 60. And that's all over, not a very straight line, but oh well. That's all over this 0 0.300 meters. And so you can imagine that these meters are going to cancel out, that sign has no units associated with it. And so our final answer uh, will be newtons as well. 
And ideally, uh, theoretically, and we're going to get an answer that's going to be much smaller than this 500 newtons because we have this effective uh, leverage of having a longer arm to which we can apply the force to. And that's the whole idea of why it's easier to pull a nail out with a hammer rather than just pulling on it with your fingers or with a, some kind of thing to go around the nail and then with your fingers. Uh, so thanks for tuning in and leave a question in the comments if you have any.